Hey everybody, Scott Burnett here. Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to try to make a quick one here, but it's going to be a good one. If you have a 2020 or newer M1 Mac, you can run Windows on it. Now I know that's blasphemy, but some people want to do it, you know, for development work or just to play around with it. Or sometimes you need Windows, you know, it's just one of those things. So one of the ways that you do it is called virtualization and that's how a lot of the servers and, and desktop PCs are being used nowadays and the one piece of software I use is called Parallels there are several different ways to do this but this is my choice and it's probably one of the most easy virtualization softwares you can use and as you can see by my screen here I have a Windows 10 development machine and then a Windows 11 machine, so you can run either one. Or if you're a Linux guru, you can run Linux on this same machine. And I'm running this on a 2020 MacBook Air, 16 gig, one terabyte model. Best computer I've ever owned. So we'll go ahead and get started with it. So, what you do, you have to go to the Microsoft Insider Preview web page and what you have to do you have to get the ARM version of Windows 11 and there'll be links in the description on all this stuff. So once you sign in, now this is October 2021, you're going to download a VHDX file. That's a virtual hard drive file. It's generally used in Microsoft's Hyper-V virtualization, but we're going to use it in parallels. So right here, you're going to click on the Windows Client ARM64 Build 22454. This is the Windows 11 ARM-based uh, version that you want. It's about 10 gigabytes, so it takes a little while to download. If you're on a fast connection, it's not too bad, but you'll download that once you get that downloaded. You're going to come up here to the control center in Parallels. Now, you have to have Parallels. They have a 15-day trial. And I have a video that I'll put a link to where I created the Windows 10 install. That 15 days gives you time enough to figure out if that's what you actually want. If you want to go with Parallels and with Windows on your Mac. And if you have an Intel Mac, this works just as well. Except you won't use the ARM version. You'll use the uh, standard Windows 11 version. So right here I'm going to go Parallels Desktop. I'm going to go New. And it talks about your M1 chip and you need a VHDX file. I'm going to hit Continue. I'm going to tell it to find it where I downloaded it. And here it is right here. 22454. I'm going to hit continue. Now this one, this little screen allows you to manually change your or it will it will add all the resources that you need for the type machine that you need. I'm going to go ahead and tell it design. No, I'm going to go ahead and tell it software development. And I'm going to, for a name, I'm going to do software dev, Windows 11. And down here, I want to customize the settings before installation. Now, you can create an alias on the Mac desktop where you can just double click and go to it, but I'm not going to do that. And you can change the folder that you put it into. Like if you wanted to put it on an external drive, you could do that. Okay, now it's going to create the actual virtual machine right here. And I'll speed through it, but it only takes a minute or so to do this. Okay. 
Okay, so it sped right through that. The, the initial size is 10 gigabytes. Now for Windows 11, we're going to have to add a piece of hardware, but I'm going to show you. It did an automatic 4 CPU, 6 gigabyte of RAM, up to 3 gigabyte for graphics, which is fine. We can always go in and manually change this. That's no big deal. Uh, here's where you can go in and sync up all your cameras and printers and networks and, and USB devices and whatnot. But down here, I'm on version 17.3. It goes ahead and puts a TPM chip. Now this is one of the prerequisites of the uh, Windows 11. You have to have a TPM chip, which says Trusted Platform Module. And that encrypts everything. It's supposed to keep you safe. So, so we'll go ahead and close this. But I do want to go back and see it's given me 256 gig disk space. I don't want that. Let's go back to my hard disk. And we'll go advanced and properties. We're going to roll this thing back to 128. That's still more than I want, but I'm going to go ahead and do it. It's going to give you a little warning. And then it'll go ahead and build it. So we'll hit close hit OK. Now you can add more hard drives to this. You can add, I don't know what the limit is, but you can add a whole bunch of them. So now I have four CPUs, six gigs of memory, and 128 gigs of disk space. I'm going to hit continue. And now it's going to actually start Windows 11. And it only takes, it's, it's surprisingly, surprisingly fast how it does this. And my clock says 7.27 p.m. So we'll, we'll see how long it takes. Okay, so that took three minutes. So now what it'll do, it'll go through and get any updates. And you, you can see there's a new Insider preview. The Insider um, group allows you to like beta test software. Some of them are good, some of them are bad. Uh, so far, Windows 11, I haven't had too many problems with it. We'll see what this one does. But yeah, that took, from the time I hit start to three minutes, it took three minutes. So, and it'll do updates and it'll probably restart again. But the last time I did this, it came right up to the desktop. Now, it's downloading a new release, so I, it may take a little while. So we'll, uh, we'll speed through this. Okay, so that took just a few minutes to download now it's installing probably take just a few minutes for that we'll come back it'll probably reboot and um, we'll come back after that okay it took longer to install the updates than it did to build the vm so now it says go ahead and restart so we'll go ahead and hit the restart button um, and one of the things you can do i'm in a local account right now but you can log in with a microsoft account and once you do that, you can actually add a Microsoft license to this. And you can get licenses very cheap on the internet, you know, $20 or so. Uh, that's what I did. Both of my VMs are licensed, so I can personalize them and do other things. Uh, I do run Visual Studio on both of them, so it's, it's really handy to have it on this machine. 
just in case I don't have my work laptop with me. So we'll come back after the updates are uh, finished. All right, we are back at the Windows 11 desktop. And as you can see, it added all my icons from my Mac. But this took longer. Okay, now it's going to reinstall Parallel Tools, and that's the stuff that gives us all the drivers and uh, mouse and keyboard and interaction with the Mac desktop. And this usually takes just a minute. But like I said, you can go and add your Windows license to this. Um, get them very inexpensive. Add your Microsoft account, or you can just have a local account. Um, works very well. Hopefully it's not going to restart again. Oh, it's going to restart again. Okay, I'm just going to postpone that. And show you that we can get to the start menu. And it runs extreme. This is not me doing this. This is the computer doing this. It's just that fast. It's it's amazing. I don't think a standard Windows machine would run it this fast. Um, not sure how I like it yet. I'm gonna sign in with that. Not sure how I like it yet, but. Um, you know that's what we'll be going to you know everything everything seems to work good um let me go to the device manager all my devices showed up so yeah it uh and now you can use it just as you would any normal computer and you're sitting there on an m1 mac so anyway that's all i got for you tonight if you have any questions leave them down in the comment section um hope you hope you enjoy this i hope you uh hope you can do it yourself let me know if how it does for you if you like this video give me a thumbs up hit that little subscribe button hit that bell to be notified we just crossed 702 subscribers and i can't thank you enough and uh like I said, let me know how it does for you. See if you have any problems or if you have any questions, I'll try to do my best to answer them. And until the next video, thanks for watching.